welcome. Welcome to Carlton and welcome to the Faculty of Public Affairs, or FPA as we call it. Uh, my name is Dr. Brent O'Neill. I'm the Dean of the Faculty and I always like to start letting you know what a Dean actually is because I'm not sure everybody really knows what my job is. Uh, basically, the Faculty of Public Affairs has a dozen units in it and departments and schools, uh, a range of them. And I know today we have people joining us from Begin, uh, PAPM and Social Work. So those are three of those different kind of, some of them are programs, but they're within units. And basically my role is to oversee all of those units within the faculty to ensure things are going smoothly. So that's my role. Uh, my colleagues and I are thrilled to welcome you and thrilled that you decided to join Carlton. Uh, before we begin today, what I'd like to do is uh, take a moment to acknowledge that Carlton University is located on the unceded and traditional territory of the Algonquin Nation. Uh, people are, might be joining in today from different uh, parts of the country, but nevertheless, Carlton is found on that territory. And I always say it's important for us to recognize uh, the indigenous lands on which we reside. And secondly, I think to do it with intention, not just to make it something that we do flippantly without really thinking about it. It is an important point to make. So you're joining Carlton, you're starting in your programs, you're gonna be super busy over the next years. It's gonna be crazy busy. But one of the points I wanna make for you, uh, I wanna kind of point out to you is it's important to remember that you're part of a bigger community. You're certainly joining a, a program but you're also joining the community. And I think that's one of the strongest things that I would say uh, is true at Carleton is that it has a, an extremely strong sense of community. And it's hard to kind of think about that given the circumstances we're finding ourselves in. And, and, and we have been doing things online for almost 18 months now, but the fall looks like it's going to be a little bit more open. And so that's an important thing. So one of the things I wanna point out is that we've been working tremendously hard uh, faculty, staff, and students over the summer to try and make sure that that community, that sense of community is imparted to you when you start here in the fall, uh, whether you have classes online or in person. I think that's an important point. Um, apart from your classes, the faculty in the university more broadly has a number of events and opportunities for you to take part in. And I'm gonna say one of the things I learned uh, quickly as a student was that you will always be busy, but it's always important to take time out of it to go take part in some of these activities, to sit in on that public lecture that you heard about and you thought that would be really good. Because every single time you will say to yourself, yeah, but I should be doing that work. And I always say, you, you got to stop that work sometimes and actually take in some of that community and those events and make sure that you're your experience as a Carleton student extends beyond just your program and your classes, because there is so much available to you. And to learn about those things, I also say it's important to read your emails. So make sure you read the emails that come out from us, letting you know about these things, because that's, especially online right now, that's the only way we really have to connect with people. So take, take a moment. I know email is not the best communication. I have two I have two young adult children and they don't like email, but nevertheless, I tell them you gotta use email because it's a really important communication tool. The other thing that's important to remember is as you make your way through your program, there are opportunities for you yourself to take part in and to seek out. One of them is you're meeting ambassadors today. You may in a few years think, ah, oh, this is something I might wanna do. So there are opportunities of that nature. There's also what we call cure up the Carleton University Research Opportunity Program, which actually pays you to do research over the summer with a faculty member. So again, read your emails, see about all these opportunities and think hard about how to, how to take advantage of them to make your university experience the best that it can be. So I'm, I know I, I seem excited. It's because I am excited. I'm always excited. I'm thrilled that you're joining us. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful uh, experience at Carleton. We encourage you to get involved, take, take advantage of the opportunity and the experiences that are here. So now what I'm gonna say, I'm gonna hand you over back to Stephanie, the host who's the FPA's uh, event and ambassador assistant. Uh, and I wanna also thank uh, Stephanie for having organized all these events this week. So thank you again, Stephanie. So hope you have a great session, everybody. Thank you, Jean O'Neill, and it's my pleasure. These are my favorite events of the year. <laughs> 
Uh, so hi everybody, welcome. I just want to remind everybody that the session is recorded. So that's really important for the Q&A session. Um, so first of all, we have four ambassadors here today. So uh, they're all from Begins Papa Moose Social Work. So Ida Harkness, she is from Begins. Q Say or Q is from Papam. And then we've got Alina and Tina will be joining us shortly and they're both from social work. So our ambassadors will just say a few words about why they chose the program, what they wish they knew coming into first year, things like that, that will hopefully help you in your transition coming up next month. And from there, we can open up the question and answer session. So because it's recorded, if you'd like to stay anonymous, please excuse my bird, if you can hear her, <laughs> she likes to join my events. <laughs> Um, so if you'd like to stay anonymous, uh, please feel free to keep your mic muted and your video off and you can put the questions in the chat and I will read them out to our ambassadors. Or if, uh, if you like, you can also, of course, unmute your mic and ask the questions directly. So from there, we will start the session and I will pass you off to Ida. All right. Hi, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. Uh, my name is Ida. Um, I am a fourth year in Vegans, which is Bachelor of Global and International Studies. Within that, I'm specializing in global development. Um, so just a quick glimpse into that, I suppose. It's, there's a lot of words within that. Um, I'm focusing on like poverty alleviation and global economics, um, all that kind of thing. Um, specifically why I chose Vegans and uh, in general, I suppose, um, is all of the specializations and options that are within it, and it's always expanding. So there's there's something for everyone, and you can really like piece your degree together and follow your interests and plant that seed of whatever you want your career trajectory to look like, your your life, however you want it to unfold. Um, and it's an amazing way to like blend your passion with academics, um, and often it doesn't make it feel like work. So that's amazing. So that's definitely like my favorite. Um, always something I have to share about vegans. When I started, there was 17 specializations. And I don't, I don't know the new number off the top of my head, but there's more than that now. I know that we're definitely up into the 20s. Um, and we're also still quite new and quite small. So there's, Carlton has an amazing community. SPA has amazing community, but even like within my unit within vegans, because we're so small, you really get to know everybody. You really build those deep relationships um, that are going to take you through all four years. You get to connect with professors because those are going to be your professors for the next four years. You're going to run into them again. Um, I can definitely go on and on and on about vegans and why I love it so much. Um, but just quick, those are definitely my top, top kind of tier points that um, I'm always trying to sell vegans for. Um, my first year experience, I'll just to that a little bit. I was in res. Um, I spent my first year in res, which was amazing um, and such a great way to meet such diverse groups of people and really be a part of that amazing Carleton community. Um, I quite enjoyed it and there was lots of opportunities on campus and lots of events. Um, so lots to keep you busy with both like schoolwork, but those events that um, the dean was speaking about that you could go to. Um, I, I quite enjoyed it and quite liked it and it was, it, it, I saw it as like a good bridge step between everything. Um, and then I suppose just on the back end of that, a tip I wish I knew in first year is everyone's in the same boat. Nobody has it figured out. And that is perfectly okay. Um, fake it till you make it kind of thing. Act confident you've got this, but you don't need it planned out. You can shift what, in my case, what specialization you're doing. You can shift what program you're in. You can shift how many courses you're going to have in a semester and do some summer stuff you really can make it work for you and nobody has it figured out and don't put that pressure on yourself because you've really got to slow down and also enjoy the process um th that's honestly I think the biggest tip I wish I knew going into university is it's okay that I have no idea what I want to do I'm going into fourth year now and I'm already kind of like I don't know I don't know what's next but yeah don't push that pressure on yourself and enjoy it um I'm going to pass it off to Alina to speak about um her unit Thanks, Ida. Um, so yeah, welcome guys. Good morning, good afternoon. Um, I am going into my fourth year in the social work program, the School of Social Work. 
And the reason why I chose that program is basically what Ida said as well. There are so many different opportunities and areas to help, to be involved in, to work in. There's um, things like to work in a hospital, work within the criminal justice system, work within the education board, work with counseling, so many different options and it just blows my mind. And every single course I learn more and more about every single opportunity. Same again, same as Ida, I still don't know what I'm doing. I'm going into my fourth year and knowing how many options there are, I really just thought that it was counseling. I honest to God, I just thought there was counseling. I had no idea anything about addictions and mental health and, and whatnot, but it's really, really awesome. And I'm really happy that I um, got to be in this program. Um, it is also really, really small. We are a really small group of us. There's about 45 to 50 of us each year. Um, so we're really, really small as well. And that's really awesome as well because we get to learn um, and be really close during our classes with so many of us. Uh, in a small group um, and also what I really like about the program is not only are we small and get to know a lot about um, the students in the program but also with the professors we get to be with them while we're doing classes during office hours get to hear a lot about their experiences their how they work where they work get to learn more about that kind of behind the scenes sort of thing after graduation so I really enjoy that um, some stuff about my first year in my first year, I was also in res, so it was a great kind of balance between the academics and the social. Um, so as usual, um, many, many programs, many events that were happening within Carleton, as the Dean has said, it's a very, very big community and an amazing community at best. Um, but other than that, it's pretty much the same. Um, and something that I would also like to, I would have liked to know in coming into my first year is, not only is that again just like Ida said everyone is in the exact same boat but another thing that I would like to add is if I would have I would have liked to known that there are so many people who have the exact same questions as you and it's not only about the class questions like when you're in class with a professor or academic type of questions if you're wondering about a club there's a club going to be there for you there's if you're wondering about an event someone's going to know about that about that event if you're wondering about what type of textbook to get or how to get it someone's going to know how to get that for you and i didn't know that i didn't know that there were so many availabilities and different facebook group chats different clubs on campus um different people sorry different people who knew about these clubs or anything like that um that could help you out with that so that was something that i've learned throughout my years and i'm probably still learning so always 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 a great time here and so, yeah, so I'm going to pass it over to Q. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Kasai, but I go by Q. I'm studying in the Bachelor of Public Affairs and Policy Management program at Carleton University. Um, so one of the biggest things of why I chose to go into the BPAPRM program was because it's better than poli-sci. <laughs> it's like, uh, it's it's Carleton has a unique advantage where it's like you're not only studying politics, you're studying the administrative side behind it and you're studying how policy comes to be and how it changes our political landscape. Um, the biggest thing of why I love B. Papam and Carlton so much is the capital advantage. Um, and you probably hear that being thrown around left and right. But what I mean by that is the opportunity to, you know, actually physically see the things that you're studying. So it's like we're in class, we're learning about parliament and the legislator. We then go to parliament and the legislator and you can go there and you can see what's happening. Um, I've had many different opportunities to be part of model Senate, model parliament. Um, I was part of the Carlton United Nations, model United Nations club, which actually sent me to Washington to compete against Harvard and Georgetown. And um, I've been to McGill for that competitions as well. So what I mean overall by the capital advantage is the ability to actually secure a career in the in the, the political landscape. Um, in my first year experience, uh, I also lived on res and res really taught me different things. I was really part of RAW, which is the Rideau River Residents Association. Um, and through RAW, I was able to actually land an internship for the summer, which I worked for a member of parliament during an election year, which was really cool. Um, I'm currently now in my third year, going to my fourth year and I secured another internship at National Research Council of Canada, um, which is a government agency. 
But all these different opportunities and all these different jobs only came with the aspect of being in Papam and studying at Carleton because of the capital advantage, which is one thing I highly look favorable upon. Um, my biggest advice uh, socially and academically for first year students is to never say no. Um, when I got the opportunity to get travel to Washington, I was really hesitant. I was really scared. I was like, I don't know many people on the team. Do I really want to go there? Like, am I scared to do it? Um, but then I took my own advice and never said no. And that led to countless number of opportunities and opened up doorways left and right. Um, so that's my biggest advice is just to never say no. Um, and along with begins and social work, uh, Papam is very generally very small as well. It's a very small cohort. So it's really nice to be in a small community of students that are you know, within your program taking the same course as you. Um, I'm in the communications specialization and I'm currently pursuing, currently finished my minor in law. Um, so it's another really good thing about Carleton is just the minors that you can take with the programs. I was first studying a minor in English and then <laughs> I had a minor in Phil, and now I finally did my minor in law, but it's very multidisciplinary, meaning that you can switch around and see which interests that really apply to you. Um, yeah, that's my two cents on Papam and why I love Carlton. Thank you. Thank you, Q, and thank you, Lean and Ida as well. Uh, very good advice. <laughs> I wish I'd had these sessions when I was going into university. Uh, so I just wanted to let everybody know the Q&A is now open. So. Uh, feel free to either chime in or write in the chat. I know it will take a few moments for you guys to write your questions and so on. So I know our Associate Dean of Students and Enrollment, Paul Wilson, would like to say a few words. Oh, well, thanks, Stephanie. Um, I'm always happy to say a few words. So uh, uh, I'm, I'm Paul Wilson, the Associate Dean for Students and Enrollment for the last uh, six weeks. So I'm just learning and it's great to hear the ambassadors talk about their programs because some of them I know and some of them I, I don't know as well. Um, welcome to Carleton. Um, you're hearing the enthusiasm from, from the Dean uh, and from the ambassadors because people really are enthusiastic. There's some great opportunities. Um, uh, what, uh, what these folks have been saying is, is absolutely true. Um, uh, the capital advantage, you're in Ottawa, there's a lot of things that are here that you can't get elsewhere, uh, including, uh, hey, ambassadors, go, go figure, we can do that. Um, I, I, would, I would emphasize that um, people are here to help you, uh, including professors. Um, uh, they, most of them, really like students and really like working with students. Okay, they're human beings too. So, you know, you get them on a bad day occasionally, um, but they really do want to help. So, uh, you know, take the opportunity to introduce yourself to, to your professor, um, uh, you know, go up to them after class. So it's harder nowadays, but, you know, it, in some respects, but it's easy to email or to have a Zoom co uh, conversation, even if that seems intimidating. Don't be afraid to ask questions or clarification, because they owe you clarification on what they're doing. You're entitled to an explanation for your marks and stuff like that. So, um, so people are friendly. There are answers if you, if you need them. So don't, uh, don't be afraid to ask for help or to introduce yourself. Um, yeah, I hope you have a really great year. Thank you, Paul. So we have no questions as of yet, unless someone wants to unmute their mic. Didn't think so. Uh, <laughs> so there are no questions in chat. However, we do have some common questions that are asked in all of these sessions. So I'm going to start off and any of the ambassadors feel free to chime in. My first question is, should I buy the textbook? Okay, I can start. Um, textbooks, that's a good question. Um, I feel like, there's always an advantage in buying the textbook, I think, especially in first year because you get that experience and you understand how it's like and, and whatnot and seeing how an actual textbook looks like. Um, but if you already have that experience and you already went through that in high school or before coming into Carleton, um, there's always those opportunities, like I've mentioned in the Facebook group chats, they send or they sell used or bought textbooks, sometimes for like $50 cheaper. 
So it's a it's a blessing and a half. Um, and also coming into your um, first your first class during um, the when the school year starts, the professors also mentioned that their textbooks are, are somewhat available at other textbook stores that aren't necessarily on campus, which are again maybe not fifty dollars cheaper, but maybe ten twenty dollars cheaper, and also available as a PDF online. So those ways also always always help. Uh, my tip. Oh, Hugh, do you want to go? Sure. You can go ahead. Okay, sure. I was just going to say my tip quick about textbooks is find what works for you and stick to that. So it might be a little bumpy at the start in your first year. Do I like online textbooks? Do I like renting textbooks? Do I like buying used textbooks? Um, but just find what works for you and use that. And that's okay if it's not the same as the person sitting next to you in lecture hall or the study group that you found. And it's okay that yours might be a little different. Um, because at the end of the day, you need to do what works for you and what pushes you and drives you forward to achieving your goals. Um, so that's my biggest thing. And I think throughout pivoting online, I think that again, kind of really shone a light on, you've got to find the ways that work for you and you've just got to stick to them. If you can make using the free PDF copy of a textbook online work, fantastic. If you need the paper copy, fantastic. If you want to highlight it or put flags in it, awesome. If you're not that kind of person, awesome. Um, but just also be okay with not knowing right now. It's okay. Take the time to figure it out. Try different things for different classes. Try different things throughout both semesters. Um, that'd be one tip I have. Um, I don't know if you have any follow-up to you, but I'll pass it off to you. Thank you. Um, so great advice overall. I agree with everything being said. Um, my only additional <clears throat> tip would be for courses like economics, um, I would say definitely buy the textbook. Uh, there's some courses where you just can't really avoid not having the textbook. So uh, I took a grammar course um, and I also took an a bunch of economics courses. And with those classes, if you don't have the textbook, you're not gonna be able to complete work for the tutorial that's mandatory. So you just have to give or take and understand what your professor is suggesting. Um, and you know, someone else mentioned earlier about the off-campus bookstores. Uh, there's a lot of cool small businesses in Ottawa that sell really good textbooks like Octopus Bookstore or Black Squirrel Cafe. Um, they're both in the Glebe, just a few minutes away from Carleton. And those are awesome resources to check for, you know, friendly price textbooks and used textbooks and things like that. Thank you all. And uh, something too, I'd like to mention, if you're buying a used book, pay attention to the edition of the book. So your professor will say, use this edition or this, or have several editions. Uh, but that's really important because the page numbers and the questions and answers in the textbook can change per edition. So some, I, a lot of my professors back in the day would say which edition on what pages and what questions and so on and so forth. Uh, so that will be on the course outline slash syllabus, something you'll also be, it, nah, losing my words. <laughs> you'll also hear it be called, there we go. And uh, that just includes all of your course or the breakdown of the course and so on. If we have time later, we will go into more about the syllabus because it's very important. But for right now, we have two questions in the chat. So I'll start with the first one. For my first week of class, I have a discussion group before my first semester in one or first seminar in one of my courses. Do I go to the discussion group even though I haven't been to the lecture of the course yet? So in my day, that was a no, but I'm not sure if that's changed. <laughs> I think it's a no. I, I'm going to say a no. Um, usually, yeah, so usually it's a no. Um, typically what you do is you go to your first big lecture with the prof and all the other class uh, students as well. Um, and then you go to your discussion group um, that's divided within the groups of the students. Exactly Hope that I helps. <laughs> yeah, you just can't have a discussion about something that hasn't happened yet. <laughs> Perfect, okay. And I've got a question for Q in the chat. For Papam, could you talk about the various co-op opportunities available, please? What jobs are available to students more than NGO or government, et cetera? Uh, for sure, yeah. So I'm actually in the co-op uh, stream of Papam right now. Um, so my job is, like I said earlier, National Research Council of Canada. So it's a government agency that focuses on science, technology, research, and policy. Um, 
But speaking for NGO, I have another friend in Papam who also did co-op with me, and she's currently working at United Nations Association of Canada. So that is an NGO type of scenario where she works to connect in humanitarian causes and things like that. Um, for more government co-op positions, there's there's endless opportunities, I would say, once again, because we are the capital city. Um, I've interviewed for like Environment Canada, Infrastructure Canada. Um, when I was going through the co-op process this year and last year, there's just a lot of different types of things. Um, it's it's more or less there's some that are targeted towards Papam students, which will be the government departments, but you can also apply for NGOs and things like that. But there also are other opportunities to work with like banks and the finance in, finance industry, or you can also work with technology companies like um, I remember BlackBerry was actually hiring a bunch of co-op students. So there's a lot of different wiggle room when it comes to co-op jobs, whether you're looking for an NGO, finance, or government, but there are countless number endless number of opportunities. Um, and I would say I really highly recommend going into the co-op process at Carleton um, because the faculty are great, the staff are great, everyone's always there to help you and you gain a lot of valuable skills. Stephanie, can I just add a comment? So I, I ran the practicum program for my uh, for, for, for my program, it's a master's of political management, they call it. Um, so what Q has said is, uh, is absolutely right. But although I would say that these opportunities aren't necessarily for, for Papam students, uh, like the government doesn't care if you're in Papam, though I think Papam's great preparation. So, uh, you know, there is a Carleton, actual a Carleton co-op office. So you can check with them um, and they can, they can help you out. Um, your department, I'm not sure about these departments, whether you've got a, pra a practicum or a co-op kind of within your own units, but you could explore that. And the government does have what's called FSWEP, which is the Federal Student Work Experience, I think is the acronym. Uh, and there's a website, you could check that out. And a lot of students uh, in, who are in Ottawa you know, uh, apply for that and get end up getting jobs with the federal government. And you don't have to be in Papam or in politics. You know, there's jobs for the federal public service is a big place. So, you know, if you have any interest, that's worth checking out. Um, and finally, I'd say there are, if you are interested in politics, there's lots of political opportunities. You may never have been involved with a party, but if you feel there's a party that you support, getting out and volunteering, you know, on a weekend or two, if there's a federal election coming up, as everyone thinks there is, you could just go and volunteer and make some connections. Uh, Q worked for a member of parliament. There are lots of opportunities to either volunteer or work with MPs in some situations. So there's a lot of stuff around here um, if you're interested in that sort of thing. Thank you, Paul. So I did put um, a link in the chat from Lena. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, so that's the uh, co-op link for the co-op office. So feel free to check that out. Um, we do have a few more questions in chat. However, one just popped in based on this conversation. So I'm going to go to that and then go back to the other questions. So Serena says, what's the difference between a co-op and a practicum? And I'm pretty sure that's for Paul. <laughs> Look, you could use the word internship and have a third one. I, I used internship and practicum interchangeably for 10 years, and I still don't really know the difference. Um, uh, Co-op tends to be a formal kind of placement through an organization like, you know, the Carleton Co-op office. Sometimes there's credit involved. Uh, sometimes there's not academic credit, but it's just kind of a notation on your transcript. Um, a, a, a practicum is... Um, uh, maybe, a, I mean, sometimes again, it's an actual for credit thing. Um, sometimes it's not. So these are used, these are used kind of interchangeably. If anyone has a firm definition, then I let me know because I'd love to hear it. Thank you. I can, <laughs> I can add to that. Uh, I don't know anything about a definition or anything like that, but um, in terms of the social work program, for us, we have practicums. We have practicums third and fourth year. Uh, third year is just two credits, and so it's one full credit. Uh, and fourth year is you either choose, you either do a full year of practicums, or you do half a year and uh, like a thesis or anything like that. Um, so yeah, it's basically just credits. Um, 
and just really great opportunities and experiences. And once you've done your full year or your term in the practicum, there's always opportunities at least I've heard uh, within the social work program from past students um, to actually continue working in that same um, job space and things like that. So it's really an amazing opportunity. And there's also practicum opportunities, not only within the campus, um, but also outside as well. So lots of opportunities. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so we'll go on to our next question. Um, so this is for all ambassadors uh, from Serena. Uh, for fall term, I have all my classes online and I'm staying in res. Where's a more private place to attend online classes just so she doesn't get in the way of her roommate who might have classes at the same time? Uh, I guess I'll start. Um, I would say, well, mostly all the res rooms have study rooms on the floor, essentially. Um, so I lived in Russell and there would be, there was two study rooms on every, like all, both sides of the floors, essentially. Um, you can book the study rooms to go in and reserve it for a space to do an individual class or something like that. Um, along with that, you can always go to Res Commons. So Res Commons is where the dining hall is and um, where some classrooms are as well. And you can reserve classrooms on Carlton space just for you to do a class in it. And Rest Commons also has individual desks that are pretty great and far apart from each other where you can easily do a class there as well. Um, but since the weather is nice, I would suggest go to right outside River Building and just sit outside near the, the water and enjoy the views. That would definitely be my recommendation. Um, it's still quite nice in the fall, so get outside. Online provides that very unique flexibility to be able to do that. Um, and it's quite nice to be out in nature and um, engaging with material you really like. So that'd maybe be my recommendation. Not the best because winter winter does happen in Ottawa um, and stuff like that, but that would be mine. Uh, just to add to what Q was saying, but those are all also very good options. Um, and some of my favorite study, study spaces for sure. Thank you both. I totally agree and wish winter didn't happen, <laughs> but take advantage of the good weather while it's here, 100%. Uh, right, so this is again for all ambassadors. Matthew is asking, what did you find was the most challenging adjustment in your first year and how did you deal with it? Um, I can start this one off. I think a big adjustment um, for me was just like the shift and differences in routine. Um, and it really just threw a curveball to me. Um, like in high school and elementary school, you're quite used to being at school from 8 a.m. till 3 or whatever it be. Um, but now maybe you only have one class in a day and it's for two hours, maybe right in the middle. Um, so it's really important to recognize um, certain little routines and certain um, traditions, if you will, that, that you thrive with and that really set your day up and continue those and implement those um, to, to make something new and to make a, a new routine, something that works for you. Um, that was a really big adjustment for me because I quite liked the structure and I liked knowing like, like I show up at high school at 8 a.m. I have this class, this class, lunch, this class, this class. Then I do sports or hang out with friends or whatever. And then I'm home kind of thing. Um, so that was quite different um, and a, a great opportunity to learn boundaries and stuff um, and to be able to like respect what you need in your space and your kind of like downtime and your recovery time. And when am I going to build that in? Um, so that was a a really big adjustment for me and I'm not gonna lie I didn't have it figured out for a while it was it was bumpy for sure um and that's okay because you don't have it figured out don't put that pressure on yourself and we're all in the same boat um I'll pass it off if anyone else has uh, anything to add um speak to their their fluctuating periods of adjustment <laughs> yeah actually I would love to add um not only is it routine, 100%, it's just like to add 100% routine, totally, totally all of that. Um, but it's also within the class schedules itself. Um, just like Ida said, there's sometimes where you have days where it's just a one class, could even be a discussion class and it's like 45 minutes or an hour and a half or something like that. And that's all you have. And it's smack right in the middle of the day or 8 a.m. or a 9 p.m., 8 p.m. class. Um, those days, trust me, are the worst, but they 
they kind of help give that balance, I think, personally. Um, there's days where you have those classes where it's just one day, one class a day, and then there's the next day later, it's you have five classes, three classes, something like that. So there's always there's always a reason for it. It always gives a balance. Um, but I think that I would also add is within, within that routine, you got to find um, another hard thing was the uh, class times. I was not used to three hour lectures. Um, I was not expecting three hour lectures even. Um, I know that a lot of the times, a lot of my older friends who have, were in university have been done doing university um, saying that there are three hour lectures and I wouldn't, I didn't believe it at all. I, honest to God, I, I didn't believe it because um, I just never was used to it. Um, but yeah, it's something that is really worth getting used to and um, something that does kind of I don't know. I guess I, I got used to it at least. Um, it is something that you would get used to it. I, I think so. Um, but yeah, I think it's routine and just really learning about um, the different times of classes and things like that. Thank you both. That was a great, great advice. <laughs> uh, so we do have a question in the chat and I'm going to direct it towards Q. And that is from Sean saying, what options will students have to participate in the fall election on campus? Thank you. Uh, well, to start off partisanship aside, uh, I am a vice president for CUIL, which is the Carleton Young Liberals. Um, and I can just talk about a little bit of what we're doing and what the Carleton Conservatives are doing and the Carleton NDPs. But essentially on a typical, a typical election, we would have our in-person debate where we invite the candidates of Ottawa Center where Carleton's riding is to come in and you know debate about the important topics that affect students. Um, we are unsure if that you know in-person debate is still going to be happening, but there'll be some capacity of a debate where the candidates talk about like topics that matter to students. Um, along with that, uh, I can talk about the Carleton Young Liberals. We're doing a bunch of different canvassing events. So we connect students who join the club to, um, you know, candidates that are running in the Ottawa ridings. And we connect you guys so you're able to go into the campaign office and um, help campaign in different capacities, whether it's phone banks or in-person door knocking and things like that. Um, yeah, so that's just kind of how you can, you know, leverage ways to participate in the fall election. Personally, I remember when I was first year and the elections were happening in 2018, um, I was able to connect with uh, MP Catherine McKenna while she was running. And then she invited all the volunteers from Carleton to this rally with Justin Trudeau, which was really cool. Um, and it was downtown and there was like free food and it was, it was a good time. So I would definitely recommend, you know, if you can, whether your partisan beliefs are, but, you know, get involved in some sort of capacity because um, they really look at the Carleton students because we have, you know, Ottawa Center, which is one of the most important ridings. Um, so we definitely have a lot of votes and things like that. So they're always trying to leverage ways for students to get involved. Um, so I highly recommend if you're interested to participate in the fall election in some sort. Oh, it's secondary because um, of the SNAP election happening soon, very soon. You can also register or apply to be a poll worker. Um, and Carleton does set up their own poll station. So with the mail-in ballots, I'm sure they'll be hiring many more students this year. So it's a great, you know, work experience to be a poll worker and a returning officer and helping around with the, with the counting the ballots and things like that. Thank you. Thank you, Q. Very much appreciated. Um, so we have another question from Sean. And uh, he asks, I am taking both Journalism 1001 and Political Science 1200 this fall. Journalism 1001 is part of my major and I'm taking Political Science 1200 just to see if I'm interested in it. Is this advisable thing to do? So I'll start just really quickly on this one saying um, something about advisable. Uh, you have academic advisors in your unit. So these advisors you should see really once a semester but once a year at the minimum and they will go through something called an audit which is like a really in-depth report card and it shows what you did take with what grades and what you're taking now and they'll just go through to make sure that you're meeting the requirements for your um, graduation which is why we're all here in the first place <laughs> so definitely um always go to them to ask about a course or adding a minor or applying for co-op if you're not already in it so I'll leave it there and pass off to my ambassadors. I personally would say definitely like 
see what's out there, see what you're interested. You can always do a major and a minor. You might want to pivot. You might want to shift. Um, I don't necessarily know the nuances of every program, but usually there's some built-in capacity to have elective courses. So even if you take some other random course, just because you were like, hmm, let's see if I'm interested and it's not for you and it's not it, that can still count on your audit and on your transcript when it's all said and done as elective. Um, so personally, totally what I, I would do and I, yeah, I say go for it. It's great, definitely advisable. Um, maybe the one thing I'd say is keep, to keep in mind is always prioritize like your major or your minor, like the ones you're actually taking and not the interest courses. Um, but definitely and definitely, definitely um, go get an audit, go see your academic advisors. They'll definitely be your best friend and like your guiding light through all of this. Um, I would like to add as well. Um, so for me, I for my program specifically, like I was saying before, it there's a lot of different opportunities in terms of where you want to go work after school. Um, and surprisingly, to my surprise, um, there's a lot of classes, either electives or within the program that are specifically regarding those different types of workplaces. Um, I know in my first year, I only had one um, one mandatory course. And then in my second year, I had five. <laughs> Uh, so it was a big jump, but it was the best jump I probably have ever been so far in this program, um, especially because of the of how specific the courses were. Um, I remember two of my two out of the five were so far my favorite about the um, families in Canada and also children's in Canada. Um, so it was all related to children, which I'm kind of working towards. So it was a really great opportunity. And knowing that I that, that there was that jump that needed to be done, I knew that if I wanted to take a minor, if I wanted to take elective courses that speak uh, that piqued my interest or something that was cool or that I wanted to be with friends because I knew them and I was more comfortable with and they were taking a course that, you know, I didn't really need to take, but I could have taken, I would have been doing that in my first year because I had that wiggle room um, compared to in my second year. And so again, yeah, I highly, highly uh, recommend it if you have that space, of course, um, because I just learned so much. I remember taking an ASL American Sign Language course, and now it's my minor and I don't regret it. <laughs> I love it. So it's, it's an amazing opportunity. I really do. I really do recommend. That's great. Um, I also did ASL, American Sign Language, um, and it was very, you know, intriguing. I never thought I would be taking American Sign Language. And um, part, there's a question coming up, and part of that is how professors act and how uh, they can accommodate you better and things like that. During my American Sign Language, I broke my arm. <laughs> Little difficult to sign with a cast on your arm. And uh, the professor was very forgiving, very helpful. And I actually learned how to sign both left and right handed. So that's a cool thing that a lot of people don't know about. So we'll get more into that question in a little bit, but we did have a question that I answered in the chat. And Patrick asked if you get breaks during your three hour lectures. Yes, <laughs> you get at least one break. Um, if the lecture happens to be a little bit shorter that day, the prof could just say, Hey, everybody is okay if I just keep going and I'll let you out 30 minutes early or an hour early, whatever, and you'll take a vote. So you'll always have a voice. You'll always have a chance. You'll get that break. And I always use that break for food. So keep that in mind. Um, so Patrick also had another question and it's a two-parter. So I'm just going to read it all and then pass off to the ambassadors. When I was registering for my classes for PAPM, I noticed a lot of the mandatory first year classes were second year classes. Uh, for example, political science 2002, political science 2003, etc. Were these more difficult to work through and manage than the other first year specific classes, or were they generally similar? And to that, are the expectations from professors different, or do they keep the same second year expectations for first year students for these classes? Uh, I guess I'll start for this. Um... Yeah, I, I had almost the same concern when I was looking and registering for Papin classes is that uh, instead of taking first year poli sci, we jump in straight to second year poli sci. Um, so for poli, -Fi, poli sci 2002 and 2003, they fully know and are aware that there are first year Papin students within the class. So they're, it's not like they're changing up the curriculum or changing up the levels. 
But something I did that really helped me is I talked to my TA and my person in charge of my tutorial group. And I let her know that, hey, I'm a first year Popham student taking this class. Um, you know, this is my first poli sci class. Like, is there anything I should do on the side to catch up? And, you know, um, I think the biggest thing is that the reason why the Papin program makes you take, uh, makes you skip a poli sci and go straight to second year poli sci, because if you're applying to Papin, you're generally, you know, interested in politics and you have some sort of background, whether it be socially, academically, uh, or anything like that. So it's like, we're just kind of going over the things that we already know and jumping to the things that we don't know. So I wouldn't be too scared at all. I know I was very confused and concerned of whether or not I was going to be performing to the expectations of the professors, but they keep the expectations the same and you'll be able to strive through that class. And, you know, the good thing is that you're with other PAPM students. It's all the, all the PAPM students have to take that together. So you're with your cohort. Um, and I remember we created a group chat on Facebook and, you know, we were able to help each other navigate through the difficulties of that class. And like I said, the teacher assistants know that, you know, that you guys are first years. They, they tend to ask us on our first class, who are the problems first years taking this poli sci second class. So they know who to look out for to help additionally. Um, so don't be, don't be too concerned. Um, you know, just fake it till you make it, you'll do fine. <laughs> Um, if I can add also, I've never taken those courses, but um, in terms for my program specifically, um, when we jumped, made that course, made that course jump from one year, uh, one course mandatory to five courses mandatory. Um, the two classes that I enjoyed most were the only ones to me personally that I had the best experience with. Um, going into the semester, I was a little more rough for the other few courses, um, but I realized, I, I took that initiative and I realized that, you know, it was rough and I wasn't having that same um, experience. And I just, I really just talked to my professors. And when you talk to them, they're a lot more understanding than you think they are. And it was the same thing for me. I didn't think that they would be understanding because they weren't understanding in the beginning. I talked to them and they were understanding. So it was, it's hard and it's scary for sure. I still am scared. I'm going to my fourth year, first semester, and I'm still scared. I'm meeting new professors. I'm very scared, but that's just the joy of it. So don't worry about it. You're not the only one. I think another thing between um, this kind of, this isn't answering that question directly, but kind of bridges the like when you're jumping between like first to second or second to third. Yeah, it's a transition. It might be nasty and it might be difficult, but a lot of it's the pressure we're putting on ourselves and um, like, are we going to be good enough? Can we meet the standard? But yes, you can. You've got to believe in yourself and you've got to show up. You, It's going to be work for sure. And you've got to do it. But don't psych yourself out, especially not before you're there yet. Like you're not, don't worry, don't stress, don't worry about it until you're on campus, until you're there, because you don't want it to rob your summer. It's, it's not going to be that bad and you can do it. A lot of it's coming from that pressure within and give yourself grace. It is a transition. It's going to be difficult. Some days you're just not going to have it. It's just not going to be great. And other days you're going to rock it. But that's kind of, and that's going to hold true always. I'm going from third to fourth right now. And I'm like, oh my gosh, fourth year. Like, ah. But it's just another transition and we'll get through it. You've got it. Be confident in yourself. Show up. Rock it. Fake it till you'll make it. I'll use Q saying. <laughs> Can I, can I make, make a comment from a professor's point of view? Um, one of my favorite movies is Monsters, Inc. Do you ever, you ever watch that one? You know, the kids are scared of the monsters, but the monsters are scared of the kids. Well, it's kind of like that. The professors are, you know, a little nervous too, right? Being a professor is a performance art. They're getting up in front of a class, um, uh, you know, so they're nervous. They're nervous too. It's a relationship thing. Um, but I did want to say, um, we use the word professor, but professors are, it's a very, very big category. Some of the professors you get are, you know, old uh, people like me, you know, who are kind of getting slow and they may or may not be, you know, some are friendly, some aren't, maybe some are, you know, kind and everybody's different. Uh, some professors are like full-time, like they've been faculty, they're tenured, they're here for life. Some are younger they're hoping they're going to be around. They're, it's called tenure track, but they're not quite permanent yet. Some are instructors. They're not officially professors. They might be PhD students uh, who are studying themselves. They might be a contract instructor who actually has like a full-time day job 
uh, maybe as an expert in the field and comes in and teaches because they enjoy teaching. Um, they all have different standards. And unlike in high school where, you know, there's a, there's a provincial curriculum and they have to teach the curriculum, every professor pretty much decides what they want to do and how they want to do it. So, um, you know, you might have second or third year courses that are, you know, really hard and some that are actually pretty easy or a first year professor who's just like really hardcore. You have to figure it out. And again, that means getting to know them um, and understanding what their expectations are. And if you have any questions about expectations or if you get a mark and you're not sure why, then you're entitled to an answer. You know, do it in a friendly way, but go in and, and, and ask. Um, and if you're not satisfied, you can ask again. And if you're really not satisfied, you can write to me. I'm kind of the vice principal and I, you know, actually deal with great appeals. Um, so there is a process, but, you know, you kind of have to feel it out. But most okay. profs are, are friendly and helpful and they enjoy dealing with students. Just remember that. Professors are people too. <laughs> I always like to say um, it's definitely good to introduce yourself and we did have an, um, an acronym pop up somebody mentioned TA that's a teaching assistant so they're upper year students or PhD students that help out the professors and a lot of your discussion groups or labs will be with your TA so definitely get to know them they're there to answer your questions don't be scared it is terrifying but don't be <laughs> uh, so we did have a question come up in chat asking if uh I can't remember who asked it. I'll have to scroll up here. Annabelle asked if she should see an academic advisor in the next few weeks or months to kind of introduce herself, set goals, and then asking how to set up that appointment. So Alina and I did put instructions in the chat. So go to carlton.ca slash FPA, find your unit, go to contact us or who we are, and the staff will be listed. And if you have a specific advisor for your unit, they'll be listed there. So you can email them and set up online appointment. Alina has also put in the chat the page for the academic advising. So definitely look at that link as well. Get in with an advisor. They want to see you. They're waiting to see you. They're passionate about helping you. And you might just end up having a good friend through university to help you uh, with your graduation check and just to make sure you're being successful. So we don't have any more chats in the chat or any questions in the chat right now we do have five minutes left and i did want to go back and talk about course outlines in syllabus what's on them why are they so important and when do you get them for sure um the syllabus outline whatever title your professor has chosen to use that is your guiding principle. That's the blueprint. That's where you go to find out what textbooks, when stuff is due. Everything is laid out there so you can really prep and prepare and wrap your brain around it. Um, I remember earlier um, earlier in our chat, we were kind of talking about like you have to get used to the new times and the, the new timeline of stuff. Like midterms are like halfway through, like two months in. Um, so having it all laid out on your syllabus before, write it on a calendar, wrap your brain around it, all the info is there um you get them kind of like they come out it kind of depends on the professor and how prepared and how ready they are to this time pivot to bright space um but just around the beginning um so i wouldn't really expect them just yet and don't worry they'll they'll be on their way um but just as you're kind of getting settled getting into classes they'll definitely be there before your first class um one big tip i have with it is i always print my syllabuses or syllabi, I suppose. <laughs> um, and I highlight them, I write it all in the calendar. So I have everything. I even sometimes, depending on the courses, like say those courses that like have a weekly quiz that like is only like 2%, but like you've got 12 of them, I'll actually start crossing stuff off. Like we've done this, check that off. Um, they're just amazing. They're the roadmap for everything. Then you can make sure you're on the same page as the rest of the class, your professor and your TAs everybody's starting from the same position. Yeah, um, definitely what you just said. Um, I always, always love whenever I get my syllabus from any course I get, um, I right away write it 
all the dates down and everything. Um, but one thing that I'd like to add is that some professors also like to change some dates around. So there's always a good idea to maybe near midterms or a big assignments or even the exams um, right before those big dates come up. Just double check the syllabus um, or even ask you know your students, the, your classmates, or even email your professor and just say, hey, syllabus is still the same yeah okay cool thanks things like that uh, it's just always a good good thing to double check i've made that mistake so double check it <laughs> uh, my only thing to add is also like rubrics and outlines for projects and assignments are always listed in the syllabus um so you'll find yourself throughout the year going back in to seeing what they're marking for the specific essay and what they're looking for so it's always good to note those things down as well Thank you. Yes, very important. I always print the syllabus, highlighted it, put all the key dates in my calendar. Um, I was old school and didn't even put them in my phone. I had like a physical book that I carried with me. <laughs> and it just reminded me, always seeing that book. Oh, I should check that. There could be something coming up. And I'm a procrastinator, so it was very important for me. <laughs> uh, so we are coming to the end of our session. Uh, we did have a question about where to purchase textbooks in the chat. Uh, Q and I have answered that you can purchase them on campus at the bookstore, used bookstores like Black Squirrel Cafe, Haven Books, Octopus Books. Um, if you um, have to, for some reason, like self-isolate if you're coming in to the country soon um, for attending Carleton, then Amazon is your best friend. You can find them new and used on Amazon and you won't have to even leave your house for it. <laughs> you can also go on Kijiji or the Facebook groups, um, even friends. If you meet some of your friends or your TAs, they could also be selling textbooks. Um, you can also reserve them at the library as well, but that's not only. So I, I definitely went to all these different things to buy my books. That's what I preferred. And wait until after your first class. It's going to be stressful, but just wait. Your professor could provide a free PDF. So definitely wait before you buy your books, you'll save money. Uh, so thank you, everybody. Um, I had our ambassadors, superstars over here, putting their emails in the chat. I've also put my email in there. Feel free to copy those down and ask us questions. If you happen to miss the emails in the chat, uh, just feel free. Uh, the person that sent you the Zoom information for this call last night is me. So just reply to that and I can either answer your question or link you up with one of our ambassadors from today. Uh, we are more than happy to continue answering questions if you think of any um, at the end. So all three ambassadors have put their emails in. Thank you guys so much. And thank you all for being here today. Uh, welcome to Carleton. I'm super excited for you guys to start. It's gonna be the best years of your life, guaranteed. <laughs> um, and I just wish you the best in all your journeys. Um, if there's anybody else that wants to say some final closing comments, uh, feel free. <laughs> all right, we're good. <laughs> so thank you everybody for being here. And again, feel free to email any of us with any further questions. Have a wonderful day, everybody, and have a good weekend. Good luck, guys. Bye.